Right, having accessed all the figures I'd got, <laughs> he's the only one that's showing that bit of that bit of turn back. So I'm going to paint it black. I'm going to put a white uh, white pipe in. I will then go into one of my uh, store cupboards to reference one of the uh, the books that I've got on these these guys and uh, one of the Ospreys and uh, see, and then just to find out it's probably got no pipe in and it's a green turn back, but hey, we can't always get everything always right. So I've decided to go with, for the, for the musket, a flat brown. You know, it's quite an orangey brown, reddy brown, whatever you want, yeah, I'd say reddy brown. Uh, I've just had the usual summertime paint flying all over the bloody palette, which is uh, most annoying. Can we see that? Might need a couple of coats. I do often go with a black brown first or somebody, and when I say black brown, not out the Vallejo, uh, you know, the black brown um, bottle, but you know, again, tiny touch of black in a in a brown mix. Might as well go for that and cover it up for now. Need to do the just underneath as well. A very bit of slight overspill there onto the trouser, but we'll tidy that up at the end of the the end. So I'm just trying to check where I am with this uh, Baker rifle. Going a bit cross eyed here. So, I'm actually, my other lamp is actually almost going straight into my face, so it's a bit startling as well. I think what I'll do is I'll paint this entire scabbard. I'd normally do this the scabbard of the like sword bayonet, like this, um, maybe that German camo brown, but. We've got the colour on our palette, this colour on our palette, so let's use it. The other camo brown I've got on there is a, is a thinned down mix for that Chaco and it, it, it won't cover it as well, so. This is going to be, this is going to be metallic uh, brass anyway, so you aren't going to see it, but it just again, it gives us a base colour. Just to um, hide any little nicks or, you know, if you've missed a bit of primer or something. Again, you know, guys, uh, it's up to you how you prime black, grey, white, you know, zenital, white over, black or grey, you know, whatever whatever floats your boat, again, it's what works for you. Yeah, I agree, black primer, it, it hides a lot of sins. You won't often see people's little bits of chinks of primer showing through, I understand that, but I've never massively been a big fan of it. Um, I think if you've got a, you've, you've often you've got to, if you're putting lighter colours on, you've got to constantly going through the different, obviously, colour spectrums to, to, to build up over the black. Um, and it can sometimes make the colours a bit dirty looking. So myself personally, I prefer the, the grey. I think greys are, you know, you've got best of both worlds really. Right, let's just do a bit more of that handle. We will be going back to the powder flask next. I just wanted it to dry out again rather than just keep switching the normally it would just the for one figure the, the hair dryer would be going on backwards and forwards, but it's just a bit of a pain in the bum to you know take this uh take this um, camera off and things on. I've just noticed there's a strap there I've not painted in. This is it again, you're, you're talking a lot and uh, you don't always get, watch what you're doing. And even keeping it in, in shot would help. 
Right, we'll use that brown for what we're going to use that brown for the water canteen strap. Um, I'm not a huge fan of using the ones, you know, like like again for quickness, people will just use one colour, and the the problem with it, 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 you know, it looks like you've used one colour. Whereas if you if you use the different browns, you know, if you're doing, you know, if you've got two or three different browns, or in the in the the range of black here, you know, we've we're we're uh, Everything's, uh, you know, everything's that very slightly different colour. Um, I'm just thinking whether we do that black strap yet, but I think no. We'll wait to do a highlight on the, on the rifle. So let's get back to this this guy. I think we're going to have to do him mainly, uh, mainly the colours I used before, which. Uh, let me think, because we're on a fairly dark. That's a bit too. Well, right, we're going to go for. We're going to go for the dark sand. I think I, I think this is what I used before, and I wasn't a hundred percent with it. But there isn't a lot of horn there to get the brush on. You know, it's 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 quite small, so you're not going to get a huge. You know, we're not go again. We're not painting a larger scale figure here, so we're, we're not going to be putting in bits of glazes and whatever. So I'm mixing a bit of pale sand into that as well. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it's lightened it up slightly. Jobs are good. Then. All right, let's see if we can we can just pale this up slightly. I mean, you get these off. You know, again, it's, a, it's a, <laughs> when you're painting. You right now. Let's go and look at the what type of uh, color of the horns on different cows. <laughs> you know, and and you know they're, they're not all just like white. You've got bits of brown in them, bits of grey, black in them, and you name it. So we'll probably do one slight highlight. There's a bit of overspill on the very underside, but we need that to dry out before we do that. So bear with me in a second, guys. I'm just going to get the canteen colors. Right guys, now we're looking at, if we're looking at anything, uh, we're looking at the canteen, uh, dark Prussian blue for this one. I'll show you the number in a minute. Again, you'll see these canteens and I would imagine it would have been in for real life. Let's get a bit of that off. Uh, you'll see them dark, I've seen them painted dark blue, you know, grey blue. And we're going to go for a, a roughly grey blue look to this, I think. We just need that darker colour because obviously they were wooden. It, it, it was it was wood and, and layers of wood. They've got those deep grooves in them. I believe in the American Civil War when they, uh, I think it was it was it the Confederates used used fruit wood a lot, and they swore that uh, it improved the taste of the water. I mean, when I did my service, we we used uh, plastic, uh, obviously drinking canteens that were supposed to be like. Uh, chemical warfare friendly and all the rest of it and uh, I always thought the water out there tasted disgusting although I must admit <laughs> when you've been being on a long tab and you're absolutely you're absolutely knackered it didn't matter what the taste of the water was it still went down the same way and we're getting blue overcoat and coating everything here again have reminiscing and not uh, not paying attention to what he's doing, but that can be tidied up again. Blue, yeah, blue on <laughs> painting over with white isn't the best. To, might take a bit to get over there, but we'll do it. I've just noticed a tiny, yet yeah, another tiny. See, this is a problem. Normally, you'd be looking all over the figure as you were painting it, but 
because you're trying to set it up for the the camera I keep missing tiny little bits so bear with me as I I go back and uh, touch up a little bit right yeah so the blue we've used there is this one 70 oh goodness not gracious me what's that three six six oh, Prussian blue anyway guys some of these are quite worn I actually use the a lot of the a lot of the scale 75s are quite opaque um, and I only use them mainly on my large scale figures because I'm doing a lot of glazing a lot of blending uh, they're not brilliantly I don't use, I don't think they work brilliantly for doing one-off highlights on on Napoleonic figures say uh, for, for mass armies uh, but what they do they do a fantastic couple of blue shades which are great for for you know uh, French Napoleonic uniforms and that yes we're talking a talking a canteen here but what I'm saying is if I was to use one of their colors direct on here we'd have to build up and it's it's just not worth it so I've gone back to my old old faithfuls which are the uh, Vallejo blues uh, so now what I've done then is mix this guy in if we can find him where are we uh, I take it we're looking at 061 there but we'll call him grey blue anyway uh, we've mixed a 50-50 mix in with that I believe that should have dried out enough for us to get some on now I might be brave enough afterwards and try and put a war department arrow on we'll see I mean that's not a great highlight really is it but where you can it's good to highlight the individual strakes on the, the wooden strakes on the on the canteen our final highlight on that's going to be the grey blue neat um, while that dries out we'll have a look at just highlighting this uh, put a couple or just one more highlight which we'll use the old ivory uh, we're going to put some ivory on the just a tiny tad. Quickly show it in case anybody, at least they can get if they don't speak English, they can get what I'm saying. Seven zero nine one eight, and that's ivory, and that's uh, I've not even watered this down. It's just going on. Um, I'm not a huge fan of not watering your paints down. But on something like this, I like it quite uh, quite thick, so it doesn't uh, it doesn't run too much. Right, that's given us our, our highlights for that. That gives us our water canteen. Should have dried up under these lights. So we're going up for this uh, this blue grey now. what we're doing again it depends on the manufacturers to how they've how they've done their sculpting um, if you can't if you haven't got any other wooden strakes on these these canteens to, to follow uh, to put the little dots around then just put little dots around <laughs> just to show that you know the wood stands up in, in places where it's uh, it's put together we'll put a tiny bit in the middle not overkill though um, got a bit of shaded area here but there are bits that might catch the light so we'll go around at the top there with that so that's that's the the canteen done again you could do it a whole a lot lighter than that leave the dark blue you know the Prussian blue out and and build it up from a lighter base you know it's, it's entirely up to you what you want to do with it uh, we're going to use for speed more than anything we're going to use the same brown we used on the musket because a lot of that's going to be covered up and we're going to use it on the on the canteen I mean, I'm going to have to uh, clean this bread back up a bit when we've uh, we've got this done I have a 
feeling I'm going to be charging batteries up uh, before we do the next, uh, the next, or probably the flesh will be the next step. No, it won't be the piping probably, and then the flesh. So let's just get in here now with our our strap for the canteen. Right, so we've got our canteen strap in there. Um, what we need, we need a bit of black because there's a couple of obviously metal. You can't always see, um, see them on on sculpts. You know, it's up to you whether you put them in there or not. I would imagine there'd have been one under there. So although there's not been sculpted, we'll put one there. That's to put our bit of bit of metallic on. Right, so what we're looking at now, I believe, what do we do? Uh, I think we'll actually go metallic next. So bear with me guys and I'll get my metallics ready. Right guys, uh, I've just taken a break for a couple of hours. I fortunately run out of time. Um, let's get back to our figure. Right, we're going to be looking at the metallics now. So we're going to be doing the uh, sword bayonet, the barrel, anything you know, silvery metallic. For that, I'm going to be using, if we get in shot, oily steel. Uh, 177 is that? There's another number there, but it's a bit obliterated. But oily steel anyway. It doesn't really matter what metallic you use because I've put um, two thirds uh, metallic and a third. Uh, black uh, game ink. Uh, again anything will do in that really it's just to darken down the the metallic a bit or a fair bit depending on how much you put in and I think I'll put a fair bit on this one. Oh, it's not too bad. As I say the grey backing that we've put on the on the gun barrel and the the sword bayonet itself will alter the appearance of the, the metallic slightly. I'm never a huge fan of, you know, the ultra bright spangly, you know, uh, metallics. And what you could do to change the, the look of this is, you know, keep it like this as a metallic and then um, just put some washes over, just some paint washes you made up yourself, you know, you can put some uh, watered down turquoise on, some blues, uh, if you wanted to, you know, alter the, the look of the metallic for whatever reason, obviously black, um, and then highlight it up by using maybe raw um, oily steel, as, you know, as in not mixed up with anything. Or a different silver, if, uh, if that uh, takes your fancy. Right, I'm really suffering for my art here because uh, I've shut all the windows, it's baking hot. Um, because we've got an Avery a couple of doors down. <laughs> Somebody's got parrots or something. <laughs> it's like uh, it's like that. Uh, oh God, was it Jurassic Park? That's it. I've got pterodactyls flying everywhere. Um, so everything's shut up at the moment, just so we can finish this video off. All right, sorry guys. I always tell you take a break and you come back to it and start thinking about camera positions all over again. Right, we've got that bit of metallic we can use down on the down on the cover here for the uh, or cover the strap for the water canteen. 
quickly dot these hopefully without too much mess dot these buttons on the bag uh, cover the cover the lid to the uh, powder horn as I say you can go as far as you want with it you know you can um, you could change the colour of the, the lid you know I suppose you could give it a brass lid you could um, put different um, you know different again different uh, washes over your metallics if you want to particularly show a different look to a, a, a part of the uh, rather than having all the same metallic look but probably pushing it a bit far right I'm doing it again let's uh, get you back into focus let's move the camera around slightly let's see if that helps I'm still out of focus a bit there or out of shot uh, what I was going to say using metallics as well is uh, I have um, I use like most of us old um, jars of one description or another and I have one that I put my uh, clean my brush out in first I have a second uh, pot that the brush then goes into for one last swish and I have a separate pot uh, for metallics uh, and even if you don't use the the extra cleaning water I would advise you have uh, one pot for normal paint and one pot for metallics uh, it'll just save you the, the chance of of ending up with, um, you know, like the odd little flecks of sparkle in your in your paintwork that you didn't want. All right, we're going to try and find this chain that goes down here now, very very gently, just a few little dabs, just to show it's there. Oh, we need a little dab on the King's uh, rosette as well. It's a little little white metal button that holds that on. I believe if do we see any buttons there? Yep, there are some there. I believe they are silver, they are, or white metal. So Let's confine those. Now again, that's the worst point part of metallics is overspill. Not doing too bad so far. Famous last words. Right, that's his belt there. We'll do his white metal buttons. We still haven't done the piping yet, but and I'm bound to catch the top button, but Just about see these ones. Right. Oh, we need a metal uh, filling uh, spout, I believe, on the. Oh, here we go. Right, Gav. Let's uh, let's get back with the program. If you notice as well, when you're doing, oh, you could do if you could actually see what I'm doing. Sorry, guys. This is because I've I've stuffed around with the camera. Um, how I'll uh, can you see? No, you can't without me. But what I'll do is I'll balance my, keep my one finger out over the the model, and uh, I'll use it to, um, you know, to prop up my other fingers if I'm doing something delicate. If that's what I'm trying to say. Bear with me a second. Let me just see the gaiters. Yep, gaiters are silver. So we've got some. I keep saying silver, white metal. Fire engines or ambulances are back again, so it sounds like uh, bad luck for somebody again. Right, 
Right, as far as I can see for the moment that's our white metal uh, sorted for the moment. While I was, as I was coming back to, the, to do this I thought, right, well, Gav, remember to actually highlight the... Start highlighting the, uh, the cord on the Shaco. Again, you might be able to get away with dry brushing this if you wanted to. Right guys, bear with me a second, I think what we will do, um, sorry, no actually what we'll do, keep the video going, uh, we will put, I've got a bit of that blue left on the wet palette, I wonder what it'll look like with a slight wash of blue on that, on that bayonet. Gonna probably look terrible. But, uh, again, it is a wash, so it's not going to show up hugely. Okay, done with a bigger brush, really. It'll just again, just alter slightly the That's a bit better. Well, we don't want it too too blue, so let's push that around a bit. Doesn't matter if it goes over the entire. Type A in it. There we go, it's giving like a blued, bluey metal effect. That's not too bad. Again, it's just, this is just for a, a nice, decent. I don't like using the word tabletop standard and this standard particularly because everybody, it's all subjective, isn't it? It's everybody's ideas, you know. Um, so it's just, you know. Something that I'd be anyway happy enough to see on the on the table. We're just gonna we've got some of that chain that links up the uh, the picker here, and we're just gonna highlight that. Right, that is for the moment our white metal done. Now we'll go on the on the brass. Brass being, let's get it in the shot gav. Z seven zero dot eight zero one brass, and to actually uh, change that slightly, you can put you know bits of paint in. It's really you know again time to experiment, really, guys. To, you know what what you fancy putting in there. But I put a dab of strong tone in a lot if I don't want to put a an actual color in there. You know, actual paint. Put a dab of strong tone in. Now this is a newer bottle. Of Vallejo, the older ones used to be like the one I've just used for the oily steel used to be quite thick, uh, and they've. And I was always a bit, you know, I wish they they'd make it a bit more, a bit more runny. Well, they seem to have done so with the brass. That uh, if you try and put any, if you try and put any um, uh, extra water in or whatever, it, it tends to go really, really sloppy. So uh, just put your, put two thirds brass in, a third. Um, strong tone, see how that works for you, you know, you might need to put a bit more of either in. So we're going to go to our handle, can we see it, yep. Go into the handle of the sword bayonet. That's given us a fairly dark brass rather than again, you, I mean it's not so bad than doing say the 18 mils where they really, you know, the the, the, the sparkliness of the of the 18 mils, um, it tends to, you know, doing, I've got some Hussars in the AB range that I'm about to paint up as part of the commission I'm working on and uh, they're always a nightmare because uh, the, they really do sparkle and twinkle about and for the scale it often looks a bit a bit off for me. That's our sword bay in it, I think so. Again, it doesn't matter if if you've got uh, 
bits of the base colour showing through because that just sh that forms like a shadow area. We'll do the trigger guard, which is quite long on the Baker rifle. Oh, actually, saying that he's got his uh, his hand over most of it, so I think that's uh, that's helping us. We'll put a dab there just so it's seen, and also the picker. I believe was brass, so we're going to just show that down at the base. We just have a look at my figure again that uh, I'm keeping an eye on. I'm going to give, I'm going to give this little, I keep calling it a cap box. I'm going to give it a brass, a brass button, and there's a tiny bit of like the old um, S-type belt buckle showing. I believe that's what it is anyway. <laughs> it is now. Uh, I'll give that a brass hit as well. And then we've got our uh, butt plate. And this is where they keep, I believe, keep the patches and that in. And what I normally do is uh, let's see if we've got any of that. We've got lots of that black left. <laughs> lots of it. Uh, I'll put a, a black line um, just in front of that, just to, to raise it. You know, get, you know, um, show a slight shadow area. I believe if I'm yeah the. I believe the cap badge is brass. I always thought it would have been a white metal cap badge, but uh, I believe it's brass. It's a hunting horn. Again, the, the, obviously the, the matte varnish itself is going to take take it down slightly. I'm just checking now if we've got anything else that we need to do in the brass. Probably missed something. Oh, there's a little belt buckle on the on the chest harness type thing. Just to give you an idea on, on what I wipe off, that's all the little, every time I paint something, that's what I'm wiping off. Obviously the biggest splodges are just wiping off. I use a, I use the old pointy stickers I keep showing you on different videos. That's an old barbecue skewer, which is a bit counterintuitive when you're <laughs> putting it in on, on a wet baking paper and, and kitchen towel, but it's quite blunted with use and uh, it, it just makes my life easier stirring paint up. If you use, if you use a, 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 a brush it'll just go all up the, the the ferrule if you use an old brush you, you you end up soaking loads of paint up and wasting it so um, that's what I do anyway right guys uh, join me in a minute and we shall attempt to get this piping looking for something be back in a minute right guys thanks for joining me again now we're going to be looking at the piping now, I'd said before as well, I checked in, I've got my light, my Osprey light, let's get this in focus. Oh, one of these days I'll actually do a video where you actually can see the figure all the time. Uh, yeah, what were we going to say? Um, I'd said I'd paint in this, there's a, there's a black turn back here. I'm actually going to paint it green. There's, you guys might be able to tell me different. I've looked on the Osprey and I couldn't see anything or read anything that said that uh, it was black or it had white piping round. So... I just thought it might have done, but um, of all the figures I've painted in the unit before this, uh, I hadn't actually got any turn backs that I could see. Um, so I might be wrong. Let me just have a look at this guy again, make sure. No, he's covered up in all, <laughs> he's got all his bits all covered up. So, right, um, we might just leave that dark green and I'll put a dark green over that in a bit and leave it un unpiped. I'm sure somebody can tell me different. Uh, sky grey for this one, the same. Well, hang on, just let me put a. Well, we've still got decent paint. Yeah, we can see. Try and get it if you can in one hit, one one line. 
Uh, it won't look obviously so jagged then. Uh, the only thing you've got to be a bit careful of, which I nearly ran into there, was um, obviously if the if the great coat on the backpack is quite close, you end up putting a stripe down the the great coat as well. But that's our uh, sky grey. Again, it's the one we used before, and I've put it away. So just just remember sky grey. Uh, any you could try and get away with your silver grey as well. Um, I tend to find because you're messing around on darker colours. Um, I think the sky grey just, just covers it that bit better. Then we're using the side of the brush here on the end of the, the collar uh, so you don't get the telltale uh, thicker. You'll often see uh, thicker uh, piping at the end and it's usually because people try to use the point of the, the brush um, and on the very ends of the collars just use the side of the brush with as much paint removed as you can get away with. And again, we're trying to go for one hit there, which I've completely failed at, so we'll go again. Now in this case, I'm probably gonna to have to use the point of the brush. See, this is all about painting. You've gotta you've got to completely adjust yourself all the time. Um, if I try and use a side of the brush there, unless I can go upside down, we'll try and... No, we're going to have to go point. We might have to clear the thickness of the... Because what you tend to find is you get a thicker line at the bottom than you will at the top. It doesn't look too bad. I might, I might go again on the top. See, so it's just patience sometimes, you know, as much as you want to rush it. a bit better. We can always put a, lot, a thicker line of, uh, some people would put a dark, dark demarcation line above that around the flesh, um, but I don't like to see that too much. So that's our, that's our first line around, our first bit of piping around the collar. It's going to be then, we're going to actually have the, let me just check where the side, yeah, it goes around there. This caught me out before. All the different ways that people um, or countries and different regiments pipe. The actual this has got like a like the like one pointy pointy cuffs, and the white piping goes underneath the, the top button and forms a. forms a point just up, up the top of the uh, button. Sorry, for uh, this is where uh, all the tinkly tinkly music's better in the background, but... This is where it all goes terribly wrong. Than that, so I keep trying to check that I'm in. Uh, now the problem is we're having to work with where the sculptors put the buttons, and trying to work our our little pointy collar in a bit, cough, cough even. So it's a, it's a bit hit and miss when you're doing these. I find anyway. We've gone slightly up over there. Can we get that back? Probably not. But it's not massively hard with piping to uh, adjust it. If you've got a thin enough paintbrush like the one I'm using, you can go around on that and uh, just adjust it in and out, you know, as in putting the black onto this, onto the grey or the white. I, I wouldn't try adjusting, adjusting the piping until you've actually put the white on top because uh, otherwise you might end up doing it twice. So again, hopefully this is in the right place. What we're trying to do here is, is find our highest point that's slightly just above the... 
above the uh, button area. And I think we may have to go a bit higher than that. Bear with me guys. This is where you get a, if you're not careful, I'd normally start again like that. It's not the best of uh, pointy cuffs, but as I say, what I'm trying to do is get it, get it below that third button, which uh, I struggle with on uh, all the other figures. Almost gone around the cuff there. Again, we're going to have to double up on this because we'll be putting the white above it. That's slightly a bit wiggly there, but it's under the arm. I don't think you're going to you're going to see it particularly. Now we need to just play around with this bit here for a second. Right, now we're going to go for the, the white on top, obviously it's only a, a piping line so it's fairly, it would have dried out fairly easy. Again we're going for our, let me just show you again, in case you've only been watching bits of the video, uh, let's see if we can get her in shot, there we go, white German tank crew. crew. Uh, again, Vallejo Panzer Aces series. We'll go back to the collar. Now you don't, I'll often use this neat, which I'm doing now. It's not always great for the brushes, but um, on, on, uh, on piping, this isn't a type of colour that, that goes massively dry and, and patchy as, you, as you're doing your line across the collar, say. Um, so you can get away with it if you water it down like I normally would um, You don't often get your, your liners straight Again, Can we see just about Can use the side of the brush here And that's that's what we're looking at for the for the uh, piping. Doesn't have to be any more spectacular than that, because you'll also find when you start doing the face, I'll change the look of the colour of the piping slightly just with the what it's butted up to. So we'll go for this. Uh, we'll go from the apex of the point down. One stroke, one paint. Wash paint, paintbrush out before you do the next stroke, and then we'll go up. Again, going around the back, you you could almost say it's in shadow. You could leave leave that if you really wanted to, but. You know, let's face it, if you've done all that piping, you might as well do the rest. And on this one, I've got to too much paint there. There we go, let's wipe her off. Again, when it's warm, and you're using a thin brush then I would advise you you know keep keep it moist you know once you've done your stroke don't even you know decide to chat to somebody or you know change your your music or you know view YouTube vid or whatever just wash the brush the brush quickly because it will it will dry up and 
Right. And that's our uh, that's our pointy cuffs done. There's a bit of black showing there, but that's only because it's uh, it's at the base of the the button, I believe. Anyway, right, guys. So we've let's get right. See, I've moved. I've moved everything, and now uh, I was doing all right <laughs> to a degree this afternoon. Right. Um, we've still got to do a, a highlight on this on this uh, woodwork as well. So I think we'll we'll do the high white high white the highlight on the the wood um, highlight on the strap of the water canteen. I think where do we go from there, Gav? Uh, we'll put a black line. Actually, before we do anything else, no, we won't. We'll do the highlight first on the wood. We'll get there in a minute. Right, I'll be back in a moment. Right, guys. Uh, had a bit of a struggle deciding which uh, which highlight I was going to use for the wood, and uh, I've, in the end, I'm going to try one of my old standbys that I use on my 18 mils, which is uh, Vallejo Game Color 72.042. Uh, uh, you can do it in red leather. Um, that's roughly the same type of color. Um, there isn't a lot to show here. We're not going to be drawing on wood grains or anything. Um, we're just going to be highlighting. Uh, the high points, funny enough. Um, just giving it a slight orange look to the to the woodwork. Again, it will dry slightly darker than the uh, the highlight. There isn't a lot to, as I say, to show on this because you've got the the large brass uh, plate. Um, you're not really. You're not really. Um, you know highlighting a great deal as you would on a a different pose and a different musket like the brown bess. We'll do a different colour for the highlights for the for the strap on the canteen. So for the strap on the canteen we're gonna go with it's not something I use a lot of, but it's uh, 70940 and that's Saddle Brown. These will be probably the last bits we do before we start attempting to uh, paint a face on camera, and <laughs> that's going to be fun. Maybe for you, not for me. So again, with this strap, there's not a lot showing. You know, it's uh, especially when it's off camera. Um, it really is. You just get away sometimes with just doing some little dots, you know. Um, it just adds that bit, you know, when you highlight something like a, a water canteen strap rather than just leaving it one basic black, a brown even, it just, you know, again, it just adds that, that extra little degree of difference, I suppose, if that makes sense. Uh, we're going to use this black brown while before, now we've actually done the, the highlighting on the on the stock. This is the sling for the uh, for the rifle, which I've got a bit on the hand, but that's not a problem because I'm going to go over with the base colour one more time probably. Right now, this is again the difficult bit, not just getting it on camera, but actually. Uh, Actually, getting to it without marking everything. That's why I've left using this um, this one rather than my uh, this army painter brush rather than the Windsor and Newton because I've just got a feeling that's going to spin slightly stubbier. It's going to go everywhere, so we'll uh, just use this for a moment. I 
think that's uh, all that we can see on that. So you know it's there. Right, what we're going to do while we've still got the black is just go around the uh, the butt plate here. It's nice and easy. Just makes it a bit more three D. That makes sense. It just shows it's it's there. It's not just a, a bit of sparkly brass paint that's there. It's it's got a bit of form to it. No point doing the other side because we ain't gonna be able to see it. And I'll also do it here. I'm not a huge fan of demarcation lines, you know, black lining in other words. Um, but I do use it where um, occasionally like on those Italian 18mm ABs, uh, they've got like white jackets and things like that onto white trousers and what I'll do is I'll use like a, a mid-brown type colour and just uh, do a demarcation line around that. And it's the same here, we just, where you've got lots of sparklies as I call them, or metallics, I just like to just get a, a bit of a demarcation line going on those. Um, while we while we've got that saddle brown, let's put some on his uh, leather on his shoes. Again, you don't have to. You can just say, well, he'd normally have mud or dust or whatever. But again, it's a war games figure. Just again shows a bit of difference. You've got to have the trouble to do it. Or oh, let's do a demarcation line around that uh, lid of the of the pot there the uh, powder powder horn around the uh, end applicator whatever you call it right down the end there there we go I think I've got rid of it so a tiny little piece of piece of primer. Um, here we can still see. It might not be actually. It might, it might be a lighter colour grey that I'm I'm picking up. Um, oh, that's one thing we didn't paint while we're here. Let's get another brush. We haven't done the brass tip to the to the bayonet. I wondered what I was leaving off there. Again, there's no point doing a demarcation line, obviously, because it's black on this. Sometimes, if I if I can see it, rather than you know, if there's a bit like there's a bit of grey paint going on there. I'll do it while I've, you know, rather than say, right, I'll leave all clean up towards the end. Sometimes it's, it's, it's wiser just if you see something, do it because you'll forget it otherwise. Um, I'll do him a black stock in a minute in this, this neck part, but I'll leave that till I've done the flesh uh, in a moment. Uh, the tufts would need highlighting. I'm just seeing if we've got any of the, if I've got any of those greys left. Let's just have a quick look. Yeah, I think we might better get away with that. So this, these wooden tufts here, yep, we're in shot still. Just give give that a slight look. It's better to give something on that rather than just leave it black, solid black. Right, guys, bear with me a second. I'll sort my flesh paints out, and we'll uh, we'll have a crack on this face. What can go wrong? I'll see you in a minute.